Number 20. Determine if the following system is at equilibrium. And if not, in which direction will the system need to shift to reach equilibrium? And then they give us this equation. And then they give us the concentrations, right? And the KC value, right? They say the KC for the reaction is 0 0.078. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just, I'm just going to write this a little bit bigger, just so that we can work with it better. So it looks like we have the equation of SO2, Cl2, and that's a gas. And this comes to equilibrium. I see that I have the double arrow to SO2, and that's a gas, plus uh, chloride gas, right? Chlorine gas, Cl2. Okay, now I don't see any coefficients, right? I don't see any numbers in the front. So when that happens, I always just double check just to make the equation is balanced. Because if it's not, all the other stuff that follows isn't going to be correct. So just make sure you have a balanced equation. But I'm scanning this and I see that it's balanced. So I'm going to proceed. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to write out the concentrations that they gave me under who, you know, who they say it is. So for SO2Cl2, they said that I have 0.12 molarity. So for this guy, I'm just going to write under here that I have 0.12 molarity. For the Cl2, I got 0.16, so I'm over here. Molarity, and then for my SO2, I have 0 0.050 molarity. Okay, now, how are we going to find out if the system is at equilibrium? Well, that comes down with knowing the K value versus the Q value. Now, looky here, guys, right? If your K equals your Q, if your, re, um, if your equilibrium constant, which is K, equals the reaction quotient, which is Q, your system is at equilibrium. So the first thing I have to figure out is what's the Q? They gave me the K value, and if we're at equilibrium, the Q value is going to be the same number. So we've done tons of problems figuring out how to write a Q expression. The general form is just products divided by reactants, right? So this side divided by this side. But remember, only aqueous and gases are allowed. So just always check the states first. But in this case, I got all gases. I got a gas, gas, and a gas. So all three of these are going to be in my formula. So let's write out the Q formula. So I got QC equals... Something divided by something else. Let's work from the top. Products divided by reactants. I see that I have SO2, and we're dealing with concentration. So standard uh, formula is using brackets. Brackets for concentration, a.k.a. molarity. So I'm going to bracket my SO2, close my bracket, and remember, we said that there was nothing here, right? So that means that there's one of them. But you can raise this to the first, but remember, anything raised to the first is itself. So I'm just going to keep going. And remember, when you're working with the Q formula, it's not plus, right? On the balanced equation, these two are added together. But when you're doing your formula, they're being timesed by each other. So just to do that, I just, you know, do another bracket. But you could add the multiplication sign. That's fine, too. And then I'm going to say I got CL2. Close that up. This one was also a one coefficient in the front. So same exact thing. You could put the one, right? But you don't have to. Remember, they're always raised to the coefficient. I just abbreviated coefficient by COEF. Now to the products. I got one product. It's a gas, so it's going to be included. It's SO2, Cl2. Close that bracket. This one, same exact idea, right? There was one in front, so I could put the one but I don't have to. All right, now I'm going to put the numbers. So QC equals something divided by something else. Looks like it's just going to be the 0 0.05. Maybe I'll put a 0 here, right? Close that up. That's the SO2 concentration. Coming in with the CO2 concentration of 0 0.16. Close that up. And then this should all be divided by the 0 0.12. All right. Let's get one number for the top. The same number on the bottom is actually the same. And actually, we can do this, right? There's no exponent. So I think we could skip this step and just get one number. So calci out. Got my calci. I'm going to do 0 0.05 
times 0.16, and then I'm going to divide it by 0.12, and I get a number, it's pretty close, but it's not the same. I got 0 0.067 if we're doing two sig figs. So 0 0.067. All right, so let's answer the first question. Is the system at equilibrium? So let's just write out what we got. There's a trick here, guys. If you want to use the trick, always put the Q on the right hand side of your comparison and your K value on the left hand side. A lot of uh, textbooks swap these, but in order for you to use the trick, always put the Q on the right hand side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put out the numbers, right? So I got 0 0.067 for the Q value and the K value, the equilibrium constant of where we should be is 0 0.078. So now let's answer the first question. Is it at equilibrium? Remember, if the system is at equilibrium, K has to equal to Q, but these are not equal to each other. So to answer the first question, no, not equilibrium. This system is not, I'll say not at equilibrium. Okay, so that answers the first question. Now comes the second question. They said, if not, which direction will the system need to shift? So am I going to shift left? Meaning, if I'm shifting left, I'm doing the reverse reaction. I'm taking these, decreasing them to make more reactant, or am I going to shift right? Meaning I'm doing the forward reaction. This is going to drop, and these are going to increase. Well, it all comes about, you know, back to what the KC and the QC are doing. Which one of these is the larger number. It looks like this is slightly larger, right? So when we do our little comparison here, I would say that QC is greater than KC, right? Because this number is a little bit more than this number. Now here comes the trick, guys. You see this, that treat, you know, treat this as an arrowhead and pull it back. <gasps> Look at that, you made an arrow, you see that? And which way are we gonna shift? Yeah, we're gonna shift this way. There you go. So we're gonna basically shift to the right, or you know, we're gonna do the forward reaction, whichever one you want to say. Now, in this case, just know what this actually means. If your KC is greater than your QC, we're down here. If your K is greater than your Q, that means you have more reactants that you don't need them. So you need to drop these and increase this side. That means you will go the forward reaction. And there you go. Hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments if this helped you. Let me know if it did. Any feedback is great. Love to hear from you guys. And I will see you all in the next lesson. Have an awesome day. And if you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. Thank you for that. See you later.